Good day, students. Welcome to math.serve.com. In this installment, we're going to be going over the um, problems one to five of the integrated algebra regions for June 2014. Don't forget to go to math.serve.com slash testprep.html for the remainder of um, uh, the clips on this review series. All right, let's take a look at problem number one. Problem one says the product of 6x to the third, y to the third, and 2x squared y is, so we're multiplying 6x to the third, y to the third, by 2x squared y. All right, uh, we know how to multiply numbers, so we're gonna deal with the product of the numbers first. Two times, I mean six times two, that's 12. And then we're gonna multiply x to the third by x squared. Okay, so what do you get when you multiply x to the third times x squared? What we're doing here is you're going to be multiplying exponents with the same base. So we have to use the zero product property, all right? So if you have a to the x times a to the y, two exponents with the same base, if you're finding the product, what do you do here? You, multi you add the exponents, right? So you, you just write down the base and you add the exponents, e to the x plus y, all right? So when you're multiplying x to the third times x to the second power, since you're the same basis, you are going to add the exponents. So it's gonna be three plus two using the product property of exponents. Now, when we are dealing with the y variable, y to the third and y, what are we going to do with the exponents here? This y doesn't have a power, so that's a problem. Since there's no power, the default power is going to be one, okay? Because y to the one is just y. So we're going to use the same uh, formula here, the product property of exponents. We are multiplying exponents of the same base. You add the power, so you have three plus one, okay? So if you simplify this, you're going to get 12 x to the fifth y to the fourth. All right. Now, some common mistakes that students might make when doing this problem is um, they might um, multiply the exponents instead. So you have three times two, which is six, three times one, which is three, and then you fall into trap number four. All right. Another mistake some students might make is they'll apply the um, product property of exponents to the coefficients. So instead of just adding the exponents, they add the exponents as we did, but they add the coefficients also, and it gets six plus two, and that's eight, and you fall into trap number two, which is wrong, all right? So when you're multiplying exponents of the same base, you only add the exponents, all right? You multiply coefficients, you add the exponents. So that's why we added three plus two to get a five, three plus one, four, this six and these two are not exponents, so we just multiply them six times two, and that gives us 12, and the correct answer is option number three. All right, let's take a look at um, number two. Number two says, which set of data is qualitative? All right, so if you take a look at the word qualitative, what word can you extract from it? Qualitative, if you look at it, quali quality, all right? That's what qualitative is from. When you're thinking about qualitative, they are described using, uh, they have verbal des descriptions, okay? Verbal descriptions. There is another kind of data and that is quantitative, okay? Quantitative is taken from um, quantity, okay? Quantitative data set um, are numerical descriptions. Numerical descriptions. All right, so what do these mean? Verbal basically means they are described using words, and numerical means they're described using numbers, okay? So let's do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make up an answer for all these three data for these four data sets and then we'll see which one is a verbal description and that will be our answer okay so how many laps were swum in the race let's make up an answer uh, maybe four laps 
uh, option two, numbers of swimmers in a team. Let's say they had five swimmers. Um, swimmers, favorite swimsuit colors, let's say green. Temperature and Fahrenheit of the water in the pool, let's say it's, um, let's say 70 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so which of these descriptors are just words? Can be described using words? The answer is option number three, okay? Because it's describing something. It's not a numerical value. You cannot assign um, a number to a color, okay? A color is a word. The others, laps four, numerical, I mean quantitative. Number two, number of swimmers. That already tells you numbers right there. Five, that's quantitative. And the last one, temperature. How do you measure temperature? Using numbers, right? 70, that's a number that's quantitative. So one, two, four, quantitative, but we're looking for qualitative. So the answer is option number three. All right, let's take a look at uh, number three. It said it takes a snail 500 hours to travel 15 miles. That's really slow. Um, at this rate, how many um, hours will it take the snail to travel six miles? So there are different ways we can solve this. We can use the um, distance equals rate times time formula, or we can just solve this using proportion. The best way to the quickest way to do this is um, by using proportion, okay? Proportion basically involves stating that two fra fractions are the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name the numerator of my fractions of my proportion and the denominator. To save time, I like to name the numerator what I'm looking for. It says how many hours. So what are we looking for? We're looking for hours, okay? So we're gonna be setting up our pro proportion as follows. Hours on top, hours over miles on the bottom. Those are the two quantities, okay? So the first ratio is 500 hours per 15 miles. So we're gonna put 500 on top. So that's hours over 15. Since it's going at the same rate, this ratio holds. Okay, the next ratio is how many? So let's call that X. So let X be the um, number of hours it takes for six miles. So I'm just naming the variable, all right? So that's what we're looking for. So it says X hours, how many X hours for six miles. So X is going to go on top because it's hours. And then six miles goes on the bottom, which is six. So we have hours on the top and they have miles on the bottom. So what are we solving for? We're solving for X. To isolate X, we can simply multiply both sides of the equation by six. The six and then six divides out. So we have X equals Six times five, 30, and append the other two zeros over 15. All right? So 300, 3,000 divided by 15. 15 goes here one. 15 goes in there twice. So we have two, zero, zero, 200. So 200 hours. That's how long it will take the snail to cover six miles. So our answer is option number four. All right, let's take a look at um, number four. So um, it says the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is graphed on the set of axes below. Um, this is a function form of the graph of a uh, quadratic function or parabola, as you can see here. It says based on the graph, what are the roots of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero? Okay, so what are the roots? The roots are basically the values of x where the function intercepts the x-axis. Okay, so don't forget roots are the x-intercepts, not y. Got to be careful with that. The x-intercepts are your roots. So what this question is asking is that what are the x values where the graph intersects the x-axis? It has 1 and 2. It has 2 roots in this case. So that's one, two, three, four, five, five. So our roots are 
the roots um, for this problem are x equals 1 and 5. And then we can clearly see that uh, the answer is option number 3. All right, let's take a look at uh, number five. It says, when solving for the value of x in the equation 4x minus 1 plus 3 equals 18, Aaron wrote the following lines on the board. So this is a problem solving process for Aaron. Um, all right, so the question is, um, which property uh, was used incorrectly when going from line two to three? So there is a mistake from two to three, from here to here. So the question is what error um, is there? What mistake was, was made? So if we take a look at um, line two, what do we do to line two to get to line three? We're to uh, get rid of this parentheses by distributing, right? So we're gonna distribute the four to the X and distribute the four to the one also. All right, so if we go ahead and do that, what result will we get? We should get um, 4x minus 4. But if you look at the what um, Aaron did here, he had 4x minus 1, so that's wrong. So he properly, um, he uh, incorrectly um, applied the distributive property, okay? So instead of um, distributing 4x to the two terms in the parentheses, he distributed it just to one. That's a common mistake that most students make. So this is a misapplication of the, um, an incorrect application of the distributive property. So our answer is clearly option uh, number one. All right, so that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Do feel free to subscribe to our channel to update sort of cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on markgodserve.com slash testprep.html. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.